Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate to be invited to the onboarding of the people coaching. I personally have the luxury to have some time thinking of what can be the future of companies and how we would work in the future. But always what I'm missing is the link how I could get some of these insights also into our company. Yeah, because I'm a little bit detached. And I tried now several ways and I hope, and that's my biggest hope, that you as a group, you could be something like catalysts in moving forward to the next step of our company. And therefore I'm really thrilled to be here and give some of my insights and looking forward also to the discussion. When we think of what we're doing is really something pioneering. Yeah? What we see is we are in a new world coming to a new thing. And I always compare it to the time when humankind thought we should be able to fly. Of course, there were always for centuries people, people dreaming about flying and always some also some crazy guys jumping down with some feathers from the cliffs yeah? and they died. Not, but very sensible. But there was the time when we had more or less the right insights in aerodynamics, we had the right insights in materials, and then humankind thought, okay, it should be possible. And then there were a lot of people imagining how flying could work and trying out, trying out. <coughs> and most of them at the beginning were failing and they did not fly. Some were even dying trying to fly. But then, one day, the brothers made an airplane fly. And with that, it was not a question anymore, if it is possible, it was clear. It was only the question how to improve and how to make it better. And we are somehow, with the way how we work, exactly in this phase. We think, okay, there should be a way to let organizations fly. Now we are only on the ground. And a lot of things we're trying out fail at the beginning, but we have somehow the ingredients, we just have to put them right together. And we are one of these pioneers trying to get organizations to fly. And when you imagine, for example, when cars were invented, the first cars had a steering wheel that was more like the, the lines that you were doing with horses. And it was almost impossible for people driving these cars because it was so difficult. And then someone invented the steering wheel and it was immediately possible for a lot of more people to drive with a car. And I somehow imagine we are now more or less in another analogy moving from the train system to individual traffic. Train system, it was clear there were certain trains, they were centrally planned, when will a tra train drive, what road, and you could join a train, you could go out, out of, a, of a train, but it wasn't. There was always one in the front driving the train. And now we go into individual traffic, and of course, it doesn't work the same way. Yeah? And we have to learn that how this works. And what we have learned already, I don't say that we know it already and that we are able to do it, but what we have learned is if we change the system, we have to work in these three dimensions. One is the organization. Yeah? The organization of train traffic is totally different to the organization of individual traffic. You have different rules. Yeah? For example, one rule is driving on the right side of the street. If you don't have this rule, with every encounter you have to decide do I go right or left. Yeah? It's very time consuming, it's very frustrating, the traffic doesn't work very well. And at the end, there are a lot of accidents and a lot of frustrations. That's exactly what's happening in our company. We don't have the rules, one goes right, one goes left. We have to always negotiate right, left, right, left. We have accidents, unhappiness, whatever. It means we have to find the rules, but it's not only about the rules, it's also about making them really working. That means there has to be consequences for people not playing by the rules. And it's so hard, for example, imagine, yeah? it's totally dark, nobody's on the street, you're really in a rush, yeah? you take the left lane. Nobody cares, why? 
And then if a policeman would come and say, hey, you're on the left line, we would frighten you. Although in this moment it wouldn't make a difference, but it is important that there are consequences. And what I've learned is that the consequences for not obeying to the rules is not in the first instance to change the behavior of the person that did break the rule. It's more important to keep the collaboration of all the others. We know that with the washing machines, yeah? dishwasher. We all know it's an unsolved problem of, of, work, of the work world. Yeah? There are some people that put the things in the dishwasher and some people when the dishwasher is, is cleaned, take it out. And others don't do. And if there's no consequence of just putting these things in, then the people that are doing what should be done one time think, why should they do it? Everyone else is not doing it. And collaboration um, stops working. And that means consequences for rules is important that, that the system itself can work. And we have to be, be aware of that. It means whenever we decide that is a rule that should apply to us, then we have to make sure that there is consequences when they are not applied. And that doesn't mean paying money. For example, we make the, we make the, we make the rule that everyone has to be in time at the meeting. Yeah? And then if it's uh, difficult, then we say, okay, you pay five francs if you come late. What happens? I come late, I pay five francs and say, I paid for it. Yeah? And I come late again and I paid for it. That's not the best thing. What is really more, much more effectful is officially blaming someone. And that's very, un I don't like it. Yeah, There's someone coming late and someone has to be the nerd saying, hey, you're coming late. Yeah? Nobody wants to do that. But it's so important, officially blaming someone and saying, just, hey, you're late. We agreed not to come late. Yeah? And that is something that we have to learn. And everyone, it's, it's really an, a burden you, that you take when you say, I want that our rules apply and there are consequences. The other thing is about competences. And also in the traffic example, how do we get the competence of driving? On one side, I learn it. And I learn on one side the rules. I go to, to the school and I read the book and I learn the rules. But then I have to drive in my car and I don't do it on a parking spot. At the beginning, yes, but then I go into real traffic, real traffic, and I drive a real car in real traffic. There is someone beside me, my people coach in this moment, yeah, who helps me if something is really, really dangerous, it interacts, and if not, it tells me what to do. And this people coach gives me confidence that I can do it. But it's really important we drive a real car because it has to get into the vegetative system. Yeah? It should not be always very hard to think, okay, I want to go right, what I have to do? I have to make the sign, I have to look right, left, whatever, and drive. At the beginning, you have to train it. You have to think of it and train it. And sometimes you forget some things. But with the training and with the time, it gets so normal that you get automatically to doing that and you could not imagine to do it differently. And that's one of the biggest challenges that we have. We define certain rules, how we should work, we define certain practices, but we don't get into practice. And the moment something is going wrong, and our company is often the case, yeah? then we just jump back how we did it before. That means we have to really, really get <coughs> trained in it, the competences. And then what's also important, competence, the word has two meanings. Competence means I can do it. And competence means I'm allowed to do it. With driving, I get a driver's license. And the moment I have a driver's license, I'm allowed to drive. Nobody can tell me, no, you're not allowed to drive here, whatever. Yeah. And you have to drive like that way. No, I can drive whenever I want. With what car I ever want, as long as it's Malatu, you know. But that's also something that's happening in our company and in a lot of other companies. We say, yes, please take over responsibility, drive this car. 
Then I sit in the car, I start driving the first roads, and then someone comes from the other system and says, oh, but not this way, the other way. Yeah, that doesn't work. We know in, 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 in traffic, even if there are accidents, yeah, it's normal. Accidents happen in every system. We don't take away the driver's license of this person if it made an accident in good faith. Of course, it's dangerously done, then we take it away, but it's the exceptions. Most of the time, we know an accident happens, and it's a learning experience. Sometimes it gives pain, but accidents happen. And often in, our, in companies, when we see, we say, okay, you, you're now allowed to drive. First of all, we, have, we don't have any rules, just drive. Yeah? Then people drive right, left, accidents happen, and then we say, ah, I've known it, it doesn't work. And then I don't even take away the driver's license of the person that made an accident, I take it away from everyone. Yeah? That means we have to understand that competences means knowing and being really trained that we can do it, and also have the competence in this meaning of being able and allowed to do it. And that's one of the, out of my perspective, one of the functions of deep coaches. You are the driving instructor. Yeah? You sit by people and even in difficult situations you are with them. And you help them. And you make sure that they are able to do things. And you make also sure that when they're doing things, that they are allowed to do things. And if someone out of the other system comes, it's you. It's first and foremost the responsibility of the person to say, hey, I'm allowed to do that. But if not, you should help them. You have to get that. And of course, we need a different infrastructure. We cannot say you drive now a car, but you have to drive on the rails. And we are a software company, but when we look at how we support our organization, ourselves, with infrastructure, I would say we, could, we have some room of improvement there. Yeah? And it, it doesn't have to be always software. Yeah? It can be whatever. And it doesn't have to be our own software. It can be other software. For example, I had, I had one organization I co-founded and it was a natively running on our operating system and then on these ideas. And we had a weekly where we did decisions and there was just a Google spreadsheet. And whoever wanted to have a decision wrote in title of the decision, what is the decision, what is the proposal, and then the mode he wants to do a decision, would want to say, I will come to that. And then we took it up and it was so ingrained that it really worked and it was just an easy Excel sheet. That means it helped to to bring up decisions in one place to read where the decisions were written down, you had it as an, it doesn't have to be sophisticated, but we have to have the infrastructure to enable our system. Okay, when we look at organizations, organizations develop the design, yeah? we all know this small companies are working Then companies became bigger and the only possibility to manage that was to put on more layers to make it manageable. Then we started putting project teams and so on on top of organizations and we started doing metrics organizations. Yeah? And so on and so on. Very, very complex things. Then we see certain things like holacracy. When you look at our org chart, yeah, it somehow circles with some um, with some um, hierarchies on top. I wouldn't say it's the optimum now. Yeah. <laughs> and the, 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 what I envision as how companies look in the future, it will be a network of certain circles of pyramids or however you call it. It means little things that are interconnected, that are working and they are permanently changing. You know, that means you have both six, but they're connected and changing. It's like a permanently changing thing. It should be animated, yeah? And probably in the future it will be really something like an organism. Yeah? We don't know yet, but we see, as with flying, we see certain, um, certain building blocks of how organizations could look like in the future. <coughs> and when when we were struggling, and we were always struggling with how we work together, we, we put 
a lot of thoughts and ideas into first we made a manifest and we made a constitution and so on. We worked it out. I think it's really, really smart, but we don't live it most of the time. I don't know if you even know most of you. We have defined the three core values and we have said what is it over what, like the HR manifesto. We have some areas where we said there yeah, we have issues like how do we do decisions, how has leadership, how do we talk package performance, how do we do feedback, conflicts and so on. A lot of very smart things. I encourage you to read it and to understand it yeah, because Beauty people coaches usually bring that in yeah. and take it as a guidance for your own behavior because you're the role models and you cannot ask others to do that if you don't do it yourself and of course it should also be guidance for your coaches and whenever you have a whenever you have a difficult situation sometimes it helps to look up what our manifesto says about that Sometimes they're good solutions in. It takes courage to, to act on them, right? because sometimes it's not very nice what, what it is requested from you, but it's a good guidance. And you also should understand this manifesto as right. If you feel someone in the interaction with you or in the interaction with others is not following our values and our, our constitution, then you, the values in the constitution gives you the rights to say, hey, I expect it from you. It's not easy, yeah, especially if it's a lot of things going on and then and it's not about it's not about whining about, yeah. Be clear, be clear in the in the way and just state it and say, hey, that's not how we want to work together. I want you to change that. And because we all know to build up a good culture, it takes a lot of energy from a lot of people. <clears throat> and it's really, it's really a lot of work to build up good culture. And to destroy a good culture, it needs only a few incidents, only a few incidents, or what I think what is more in our company, subtle neglect. Yeah? It somehow deteriorates with time if we don't care for it. And you are the center of those who care and the multipliers of the making. And when I, when I look what we have as issues in our company, I would say the biggest missing block is that we have good leadership. And I don't talk about leadership in the sense of the old system. I'm talking about leadership of the new system. And I will come to that. Because what's interesting is if we have a king, a king always thinks he's the superman. Yeah? And why? Just there was there was an incident that I had. Once Mark very new in his new role as CEO came to me and complained, Hammer. I don't know. Yeah? There are some, some groups of people discussing since weeks and months and not moving forward. Then I have to come, I have to ask them in the room. I listen to the ones, I listen to the others. I find the solution and then it works. Why can't they not do it? And with time, this becomes your normal. That means you see, you see things that don't move forward. You come in, you solve them, and then it goes better. And if this is happening day in, day out, for years, then at the end, it's normal. You get the impression you're the only smart guy in the room. I don't say Mark Stefki's opinion, but that's somehow that, that comes, that, that, that you, cannot, you cannot prevent that. That's happening. Yeah? And the interesting point is, if you're looking, for example, there's another person who <coughs> does almost the same thing. It's a judge. There are two parties in a conflict. A judge, a judge lists to these two parties, makes a judgment, and then it's more or less solved most of the time. 
Interestingly enough, the judge doesn't think he's the smartest guy in the room. He knows it's part of his role. It's his role. It's not his as a person, he's not a superhero. He has a role, he does a professional job in his role, and by that he solves the things. And because our ideas and the media and everything, the CEO is Superman and so on, of course I think I'm the Superman. But there's also the other perspective. Yeah? If a group of people, if you have conflicts with your peer, we always ask for the one who has to solve it for us. Yeah. For example, if in our team there's a person that is, doesn't do a good performance in the moment, yeah. what happens normally? First, we think, wow, what a lazy person or whatever. We are, we are sad or angry at this person. Then, next thing, we're sad or angry about our boss who doesn't see it and who doesn't act. What an idiot, weak leader, um, cowardish leader, whatever. Yeah? And in the evening, we go drink a beer with this colleague because this person will like this person. Yeah? We would most of the time not come to the idea to say, and go to this person and say, hey, Herman, you could do better. We always delegate out. It's somehow natural in our, that's our vegetative system, how we work in the moment. And that means if we want to change that, we have to take our responsibility ourselves. And then the funniest thing is, a lot of people are sandwich. Yeah? They have people they're working with, and they are, have also something like a boss. And these persons can have both behaviors. Yeah? Schizophrenic. With their people are the Superman and towards up they are delegating upwards. Yeah? We all do that. It's really, really interesting. And that's somehow a problem in our in our organizational system nowadays. <coughs> and what we said as our solution, as a concept, is that we build an operating system that has clear leadership in the sense of command and control and some um, HR network. And what we have to do there is we have to modernize command and control and we have to test and learn HR networks. That's what our belief is that we're doing with our customers and we also should do internally. And modernizing command and control, we all know that. One of my most favorite examples, most of you know it, yeah, is this when we would draw um, control, we for example would draw a policeman who measures the speed we're driving and if you're driving too fast, we get a fine. Let's control how it works and in most companies it works like that. But there now are some um, signs that show the speed. Just show the speed if I'm driving nicely, it's green and the smiley smiles at me. If I'm driving too fast, it's red and the smiley looks angry. And interestingly, to look what happens, most of the people get to the right speed. Yeah, most of the people. But what happens? The information that is on the sign is the same information that I have on my dashboard. No, it's redundant information. Yeah? I know I don't get fined. Why are they doing that? Point is, because this information is outside of my influence. That means other people can transparently see, yes, I'm too fast. Yeah? They don't think, wow, it was really fast. No, they see it with 20k too fast. And then, because others can see it transparently, I change my behavior. Just like that. It wasn't possible 20 years ago because technology was not there. And it was too expensive. Now technology is there, it's, it's affordable, therefore we can do it in this way. Example of the thing companies, expenses. Yeah, some, some companies have an expense rule that is almost like the rules for the traffic. Yeah, these big books. And then there are a lot of policemen that look if everyone expands right. And there are other companies that say our expenses is one sentence, what is in the best interest of the company. And all expense trips are just transparent. From the CEO to the doorman. Every expense trip. And then what happens, there are these very important customer dinners. People that are doing that. Oh, it could be seen by others. 
Because earlier days it was not possible. We could not invite everyone to go into the finance office to go through the pay slips of everyone. Now we have technology, we can provide all this information. We can even put some some big, big data and data analytics on top of it and say, okay, how is the performance compared to the expenses, whatever. And everyone can look into it. And just by that, control works differently. It works as self-control and it works as peer control. You need much less policemen. That means we have to find ways how we change our command and control and modernize it and yeah. here. Out of, out of my research and all out of the issues I've seen in our company, um, I've come up with some insights that I most, most of the time learned during my year when I was working um, under Mark, my, my successor, yeah? when I was working under Mark as a CEO. They had a, that, that, there I had to learn what it means to follow someone. <laughs> And but the situation was, I thought there will be some, now is the time where there's someone that will lead the company better than I can, could do it. And therefore, I proposed him to become CEO. And consequence it meant, I often have seen him doing things where I did not agree. I would have done it differently. But because I proposed him and I said he would do it better, of course, he has to do it differently than I would have done it. Therefore, I had to, to endure and see how it works out. And just by that, I came to this lead and follow. And I think this is one of the building blocks to get organizations to fly. And one is the question, how can I lead? And I think the point is, in the future, we have to have organizations where everyone leads. All of you and everyone in our company. Everyone has to lead. It means that is not for an elected role or for leadership in the classical thing. That is how I, as a member of this organization, can lead. Because we have to lead ourselves, we have to lead some projects, and sometimes we have to lead others. Yeah? And I sometimes compare it a little bit with, for example, let's imagine we are a group of cyclists, and we like cycling. Every week can be cycling. And there's one guy who is the best ever cycling planner. Yeah? For example, you. Yeah? You are the best <laughs> cycling planner. You do it perfectly. We are always happy when you're doing that. And now we decide we will do a big cycling during the summer. Yeah? Three weeks of cycling. And you take over the leadership of organizing this cycling tour. Yeah? And therefore, you're done. And now, let's say, me, as a really, really bad cycling planner, we say, okay, next week can we make a short trip? Nobody wants to manage that. I take over. And I'm, not, I'm a, a stupid idiot. You're much better. Everyone is much better. But I take over and say, okay, I take the lead because nobody else does it. And now I, I invest a lot of time planning my route, yeah, what we could do. I'm really proud of what I achieved. Of course, it's much worse than you would do it. Yeah? Really bad. But I'm happy. I'm proud. I've spent a lot of time with it. And then we go on the bikes. I in front. We drive the first K. There's a crossing. I say, as usual, left, because that's on my plan. You say, stupid, don't go there. Right is much better. I say, shit, okay, right, and then I'm out of my plan. Yeah? It's a total disaster because you interfered with my leadership. And that's really bad. Yeah? And that's what happened in all the time. And it, then let's say in two weeks, again, you say, okay, let's do the stupid term and making the planning. I do it again, not with the same energy anymore because it was a bad experience the first time. Mm -hmm. yeah? I do it again and make it a little bit lousy. Yeah? The first crossing. I even know it's not the best way, but I say, let's go there. You jump in, say, right. You go right, next disaster. Yeah? I do it three times, I do it four times. Yeah. Sometime I just let it go and say, sorry. Nice. When you ask me to do a planning, I do like that on the map and say, okay, that's where we're going. Yeah? It's done. 
And therefore, we have to understand what lead and follow means. Lead means, first of all, I have to clarify myself where I take leadership and where not. And most of the time, as in our company, a lot of people want to participate, but not to lead. And I take a talk with everything, I sit in the group, I have my opinion, but I don't take over leadership. There has to be someone who takes over leadership and I have to be aware and decide actively, okay, I take over leadership, I plan this route, I do this. I lead this meeting. Then I have to decide how I lead, how I decide. And we are now coming to our operating system. I can have total different ways of how I make decisions, for example. And it's not one better than the other, or one more mature than the other. It's just what is the best fit. Therefore, I'm now talking about modes and not about steps or whatever, yeah. levels, it's modes. Mode one is I decide. We don't have to discuss everything with everyone. Certain things, I just decide. Most of the time, it's not the most important things, it's just things that have to be decided. I decide. But as I know, people have to follow me, I explain, it's important, I explain my decision. I decide and I explain my decision. It's perfectly, it's perfectly well. And we have in a lot of our teams too often that there's not one person who takes up and decides. Of course, you have to explain, and of course there will be people that complain about your decision. You have to handle that. Okay? Because decisions are about, and leadership is about, to save energy for the organization. Make an example. Yeah? The, who makes the planning for the weekend of the support team? In the old world, there was the boss who said, okay, you do this weekend, you do the next weekend, you do the next weekend. Sorry, guy, you do the Christmas weekend, you do the New Year's Eve weekend, and so on. I decided. Yeah? Uh, after the meeting, everyone is angry. Rah, 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 yeah? Some people exchange weekends, but it's done. The process of five minutes saves a lot of energy. Now, modern bosses say, okay, you're always complaining about my planning, yeah? I'm fed up with that. Do it yourself. Then people sit in the room, and who moves first has lost. Yeah. And then it, it takes hours, hours, a lot of energy, a lot of negative energy, and at the end, it doesn't come anything better than before. With much more, less, much more negative energy. Sometimes leadership is about saving energy and also taking the bad feedback that comes out of it. Yeah. First. Second, I can also, mode two, I can also come and say, I take the decision, but I want to hear your opinion. I hear your opinion in advance, or I say that I would like to decide, give me your feedback on this decision before I finalize the decision, I get your input, but I decide if I take your input or not, and then I decide and explain it. Perfectly fine. And if I go and say that's a decision I want a lot of people to take, then my role changes from the one who takes the decision to the one who provides the decision infrastructure. That means, how do we decide? For example, most of the time when we say we decide together, it's something like consensus. That's the worst decision mode. Now we know that if the UNO, General Council, whatever, you almost never have good decisions. There are a lot of other words. There's the democratic 50 plus one, sometimes much too efficient decision making, but because a lot of people say democratic decision making is bad, it's very, very efficient. Yeah? You have a time box, you say then is the decision, 50 plus one, everyone can bring in alternatives, then we make the decision, we raise our hands. If there are two alternatives, we make um, a raise up, and then it's decided. Yeah? It's very efficient. There is <laughs> systemic consensus, yeah, where you say, I, use, I take the solution that has the least opposition. There are a lot of interesting systems now around how to make decisions. 
But I, as the leader, have to provide the decision infrastructure. For example, in this example of the, of the support team and the weekend work, I can say, okay, you decide, but I provide you the decision infrastructure. For example, then and that, we could do it like that and that. I lead you through, or you have even some competences. You can exchange salaries, you can have some <laughs> other things, yeah, whatever. I'm responsible for the decision infrastructure. And then, um, mode four, and, I, and that only works with teams that are really, really well worked in and well trained in. That means I would say in our organization, no team is able to do that. Yeah? There you don't need someone who provides the decision infrastructure, it just works. But then as a leader, you're responsible to manage the interface to all the others that are affected by the decision of the team. So, it means you decide how to lead. And it doesn't mean I lead for the next two years in this team in this way. No, it's most of the time there's a decision to take and I decide for this decision in what mode I decide on it. Yeah? It's situative, it's not always the fault. Of course, you will have teams or circumstances where you do it more often on mode three. There will be circumstances and teams where you do it more often on mode one. But you should always decide how to. And then there has to be an agreement of the people that are left that you can lead. Yeah. Because you can only lead if people follow you. In the example, I plan the bicycle group. You agree with that? No, okay, shit. Hammond will do it. Okay, but okay. Hammond will do it. And then if I go to left and you say shit, it's left. But we agreed. Therefore, we follow. Yeah? And that means it's important. And most of the time, surprisingly, that there are not too many people that want to really take over leadership in a certain part. But if there are two people that say, I want to lead, then of course it has to be decided who is the one who leads. Yeah? We have different modes of doing that. We have elections, we can also do it differently. The two people can decide. I have now seen another election system I really like, but no doesn't matter. Yeah? And don't. It's another workshop. It's another workshop, yeah. <laughs> As a leader, I don't delegate unpleasant decisions. That's happening so often under the label of modern leadership to delegate just the unpleasant decisions. I thought that people, they should do it because whatever. And especially because we have shared leadership, don't stop leading the topic you took over. Yeah? Because that's often happening. There are the, the new things coming in, I take over this, and then the next is important, and then I forget about the others that are, took over leadership, and that doesn't work. It means whenever I have taken something over that I lead, I have to lead till I finish it, I hand it over to someone else, or I officially stop it. I inform, sorry, I stopped leadership, and that's how I tear, tear it down, whatever. But you just cannot forget about it. Yeah? And that's something, for example, that is something where I think there's a very important that tier we in, invent infrastructure for that. That means that I always know who in the company is responsible for leading a certain topic, who took over what, then also I have an overview of what things I took over leadership. Yeah? And when I want to hand over and so on. We had once had the idea of HR hats that was in this direction. I have this hat and this hat and this hat. And if someone is coming with so many hats, then I know, okay, that's something strange. <laughs> but we have to support it with, with infrastructure. And then <clears throat> the other thing is how to follow. And that's even the more important thing. And I think here as people coaches should focus on how to follow. Because if, I think if everyone follows, then leadership works. First, support the one who is leading, support this guy or this girl to succeed. That sounds so easy, but it's so difficult. Yeah? For example, if you're responsible for a team and you have someone and you give them or her the task to do something and this person does something in a different way than you would do it, 
nevertheless make this person to succeed. Just when, when I handed over to Mark and he was the CEO, and then he was doing things, of course I felt sometimes personal satisfaction if he was struggling with things I thought I could do better. Yeah? It's human, it's totally human. Yeah? I said, okay, I could do it. Or sometimes if I was working with some sales guys and I was going to a sales presentation, I felt personal satisfaction when I made a big show there and said, okay, I still can do it. I even can do it better than the people that are hired for that 100%. But that's shit. Now, it's so hard to do that. And of course, if you have a boss, yeah, and the boss goes in a way and then to say, okay, I want this to be successful, it's really difficult. It's not easy, but we have to do that. And I think it becomes more easy when we have shared leadership. It means sometimes I'm working with Juliane and chief leads and I follow. Yeah, then I do that. I want to make her successful. Because I know in another circumstance, I am leading and she's following me and I know she will make me successful. If it's mutual, it becomes much easier. Yeah? Because it's give and take. Yeah? And it's not all, always in one, one direction. But it's not easy. Yeah? Of course, sometimes I think what this person does is not good or I have a bad idea. Then provide it as a feedback and feedback is a gift. Yeah? If, I have, if I have a nice t-shirt that I think would be much nicer than yours now. I give you a t-shirt. <laughs> I, <give, laughs> I give you a no, it's a cool, it's a cool t-shirt. Yeah? Imagine, imagine I would have gifted this t-shirt. Yeah? He decides if he wears it or not. I gave this, I, of course I want him to wear it, but if he doesn't like it, he doesn't wear it. I'm, I'm used to that, if he doesn't like my gift. Yeah? That means I give it as a gift, and if he, if he says, thank you, then I say, then I don't say, put it on, put it on, I want to see it, put it on, please, please. I don't even force him. No, I give it as a gift and he decides what to do. <laughs> Very important. <cool. laughs> then I often thought the worst or the most difficult thing is if I provide this gift and he doesn't wear it, of course I'm disappointed. But you know what's even more difficult? He wears it. He gets a lot of compliments. Of course, he will not ever say, yes, thank you very much. And they, by the way, it became it from Herman. Yeah? I was giving Mark input and feedback of how he could do his job as CEO. And then I sometimes provide really great ideas. And he did them and they went successfully. And then, of course, it was his sick human. Yeah? And it's, oh. It was really hard for me, often, till I realized if you are a leader, you got input of a lot of people. Everyone knows how to, you should do it. And one of the most important tasks as a leader is to decide what feedback to take and what not. And therefore, even if he takes my feedback, it's his performance. Because if he takes my feedback and it goes bad, he also has to take the blame. It, he then also shouldn't say, okay, but it was the idea of Herman. Who is the CEO? Me. Therefore, I have to take the blame. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's important. That means feedback as a gift. Of course, if I see Herman was now planning this bike tour and, it, and I, I ask him, how are you planning? Where were I going on Sunday? And Herman comes and says, ah, look at that. And then I think, oh, there's a nicer place. They can say, hey, what about, let's go there. And, but then I give this as a feedback and Herman can decide do we go there or not? And if we go there, then I say, hey, cool. And all the others say, cool. And Herman is the big guy, although it was my feedback. Yeah? And if it doesn't, mm -hmm. I follow the road that this stupid idiot Herman has taken. And perhaps it's even cool. I didn't know that. And it's a cool experience. Or oh, it was a bad experience. Then it's a learning. The next time, this guy probably will take my feedback for serious. And whenever you have doubt, follow and let the results speak. Yeah? Follow the way and let the results speak. And of course, there has to be a possibility of not to follow. Yeah? We are not in a dictatorship. There has to be the possibility of not to follow. And you should not follow if you're convinced 
that there are three questions I have to answer. Be totally convinced and answer with yes, then I have then I then I should not follow. One is it is really important. There's so many decisions we're discussing in our company with a lot of energy, but they are not really important. If it's not important, then it's more important to support the system of leadership than to discuss a decision. Because it has really to be important. I have to be sure that my way is much better. Not a little bit better, but much better. Because I am not the leader as a person who leads. If this person that leads has an idea and I have a little bit better idea and I enforce this person to change, I have, I have already provided the feedback, huh? just to say. And the person decided, although I have given the feedback, to go another way. And if my, let's say, this stupid idiot only made a 70% solution, and my solution would be a 100% solution. But the 70% solution executed with great energy and conviction leads to a better result in the end than my solution executed with not, without conviction. And it means my solution has to be really much better to, to compensate for the lack of energy that the person puts in. As I said, I have provided the feedback. Yeah? person decides to leave nevertheless in the different way. It means my, my way has to be much better. And I have to be sure that the other way leads to disaster. It's really disaster. If not, let the results speak. System is more important than this one decision. And I, I make one example. I was discussing that in the consulting team. Because they, I think they are now in a very good organizational setup. And if they tackle the idea of lead and follow, then it would be great. And then there was one consultant and say, yeah, but you know, there was Axel and he decided without consulting anyone that the circle lead has to approve the time recording of the people in the circle. Shit! Now, it really gives me, totally, really, really pissed off. And then I said, okay. Is this decision important? Mm. Yeah. Is your solution much, much better? Is that what we decided leading to disaster? Then please follow the decision. Yeah. Provide your feedback, but please follow the decision. Because it's important that we can follow. And it's not easy. And just look at yourself, how often we complain about decisions that were taken. And let's, let's think of that. And if we, if we are role models and following, then we can lead. Yeah? And then, if we decide that we don't follow, we have to make it open. Yeah? Most of the time, if we don't follow our boss, in the hierarchical sense of way, what happens? We go to the coffee machine, we complain with our colleagues, we somehow do as if we would follow, we do nevertheless differently, and we, that's just subversion. And such subversive not following. No, if you don't follow your boss, open up, go to your boss and say, hey, in this case, I don't follow you because it is an important decision because of that and that. My way would be much better. And what you're doing leads to disaster. Therefore, I don't follow you. Live with it. And then you have an open conflict. Then either he takes you out and you don't have to follow, or he changes the course, or worst case, you leave the team. But you have to, we have to make it openly, not closed. And the other way, how in the other way, followership. Um, is often subversively destroyed is if a hierarchical boss in our system delegates some work to someone and then says, okay, that will, it's not good. What's happening? It's almost like mobbing. Yeah. The first proposal comes and then, ah, you didn't think enough, good enough, go again, look, 
think a little bit more, a little bit better. And then three, <laughs> three times, four times, five times, and then only I'm only happy if it's exactly how I envisioned it. Yeah? That's not following. Yeah? That's not following. I can provide feedback, I can provide it once. And if this person, although having heard my feedback, decides differently, I either follow and let the result speak, or I don't follow and then I make it also clear. And I say to this person, okay, I told you you should take over leadership, but now I have a different decision. I want you to do that, like that, and then order it to you. And not doing like, okay, you are in lead, but I mock you the way I want you to, to be. Huh? It's really important. And I think if that, that is one of the building blocks. If you have an organization where everyone takes over leadership and everyone follows, then we lose much less energy in this, in this working. And I think here as, as people coaches could be the multipliers of bringing that into our organizations, wherever we see conflicts, wherever we see issues, wherever we see waste of energy, let's try to bring that in. And of course, let's improve this little help. Yeah, it's like a, a starting point. And one more thing to the end. I'm even in time. Huh? Um, as that's something for you personally as people coaches and whoever has responsibility for people. Sometimes you have agreed on a one of one with one of your coaches. Never, never ever cancel such a meeting. Never. That is so important, yeah? that people preparing for that, they're putting a lot of hope in, you cannot cancel that. And if you're coaching a line manager in our organization who does such things, it's your responsibility to tell these people, never, never, ever cancel such things. Ever. And if in the really, really big exceptions, you have to cancel them out of whatever reason. Only do it with in this moment already agreeing, finding a date where this will happen and as soon as, soon as possible. Next day, next hour, the day after, but not, sorry, I have to cancel it, we'll find another day. Yeah, it's really, really important. It's so important. It's really a little thing, but it's important. And then, <laughs> Whenever I hear someone, it's most of the time on the door, whatever, Herman, do you have five minutes? I always say yes, because these five minutes is something, is most of the time really something really behind these five minutes. Okay? It is often things that people don't dare to make an official thing, but it's something that, that is on their chests. Okay? If you hear this, you have five minutes, you always have five minutes. Five minutes is always possible. Yeah. And last thing, what I learned is talking about titles, promotion, salary, bonus. It is so important and it, it really prints in the brains of the people you mentioned that. Now a company that's even the same making a hermit. Yeah. <laughs> Telling to someone, oh wow, I think you could have the potential to become CEO. Fuck! I'm the CEO. Yeah. Don't promise anything you're not sure of. And if you're, if you're coaching line managers, make sure they should not promise anything they're not really sure of. And the moment you promise something, or not promise, just mention it. Just if you mention something like a promotion, a title, a salary increase, whatever, write it down. Yeah? That it's written down. And don't forget it. If you have taken it in your mouth, if you have promised it, don't forget it. Okay. So. That was my input. I hope there's some stuff for you. And I, I hope that we together can 
make our organization fly. There are a lot of injuries nowadays in our company because we tried to get this plane up and it jump, bumps down and the fourth <coughs> everyone gets bump, bump all the time. I know that. Yeah? Therefore, we have to make our organization fly. So it's very hard what we're going through. But the moment we can fly, it will be unbelievable. Huh? We will be the first to see the ground from the air. And it will be much faster, it will be much easier. We won't have to get the mountains up and down again. We just can fly over them. But it's still not done yet. There's a lot of work to make it fly, and I hope we can do it together. And whatever I can do personally with every one of you, or however, my door is always open. Drop me an email, call me, whatever. I'm happy to support whatever you're doing. Thank you very much. Cool.